I would have shot if we said.
Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the worship service of remembrance and hope for Floyd Irving Olson. I'm Casey DiNardo, one of the pastors at Hope Church, the church where Floyd and his beloved Irene called home. As we gather today in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may we be reminded of the faithful promises of our God, the promises that Floyd clung to in life and in death. We are here both to lift up the faithful life of Floyd Olson and to look toward Jesus and the empty cross, the sign of the resurrection of our ultimate hope. We believe in the words of Jesus in the Gospel of John. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. Eternal God, the giver of life, we acknowledge the uncertainty of our life on earth and that our days are numbered we look to you, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We know you walk with those who suffer. You weep with those who weep. You are close to the brokenhearted. Be especially near to Floyd's family in these days and the days to come. As you welcome Floyd into your presence, may you grant us the same peace and joy he is now experiencing with you. In Jesus' name, amen. John 14, 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. 
In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to the Lord, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Romans 5, one th verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Floyd Irving Olson was a hero. Floyd honorably served two tours in the U.S. Navy from July 45 to July 49, in May of 52 to March of 54. This service is commendable, but I think he was his bravest, his most heroic, on July 2nd, 1976, when he married my mom, Ruth Irene Olson. Floyd was 49 and had never been married. Now he suddenly became a husband and like a father to two adult stepchildren. How awesome is that? Floyd was warmly welcomed into my family, as well his family two brothers and their wives, six nephews and two nieces, all welcomed us into their extended family. Over the years, Floyd demonstrated unfailing support, validation, and love, definite father-like qualities. I remember Floyd and my mom bicycling, bicycling to my softball games or showing up at my sand volleyball. They attend son, attended grandson Tyler's hockey games. 
Floyd actively engaged in family birthdays, holidays, reunions, and all the other family gatherings. Floyd remained supportive and steadfast for my mom as she battled diabetes and ultimately was doing dialysis three times a week. In the years after my mom's passing in 2006, I became even closer to Floyd. Floyd enjoyed dining out. He always enjoyed a good meal and trying a new restaurant, be it Macaroni Grill, the Five Eight Club, Old Chicago, Hooligans, which we called Hooligans, or really any other spot. I remember the first time I took Floyd with me to get a Manny Petty. He was initially so reluctant. Immediately, however, he was hooked, and thereafter always made it clear that he wanted a luxury pedicure. After my mom passed, I was able to spend even more time with him, running errands, taking him to appointments. I spent many evenings after work doing a cleaning and scrubbing for him at the condo, and we always went out to dinner when I finished my work. One evening, I arrived to find him seated with friends in the lobby and having a nice chat. I put a hand on his shoulder, told him to stay and visit while I headed up to start my cleaning. As I left, I heard Floyd being asked if I was his girlfriend. We laughed and laughed and laughed about that. And thereafter, I would knock on his door and announce, your girlfriend has arrived. Floyd always showed concern for others. When we were out together, he would ask me if I had found a good parking spot, if I had enough gas. One afternoon, we returned to my car, and he noticed that my license tabs were expired and had been for three months. We immediately drove to the service center to buy my tabs. Floyd always asked how all the other members of the family were doing and what was new with them. So this is the Floyd I remember and love. The man who quietly and stoically supported, validated, and loved his wife and family. I will miss him immensely. He was a very good man. He was my hero.
Thank you, Jana Lee, for those beautiful memories. Here are a few more memories that were shared by family and friends. This one is from niece Cheryl. Floyd was an integral part of our lives growing up. He and my dad, Carl, were close, and Floyd was frequently a visitor at our house. There was a period of time that Floyd moved in and stayed with us. I can still remember him sitting in his chair at our house. He earned the name Unk in my early years, and that was our affectionate name for him from then on. Later in his life, when his memory was failing, he would look at me and say, you are the girl, and then smile. You see, I was the only girl with three brothers, as was Nancy on her side. Floyd could be incredibly stubborn, appear strict and uncaring, but underneath that tough exterior was a soft teddy bear. We were never so happy when he met Irene, fell in love, and married. Now Floyd is singing with the angels and enjoying Irene's company again. This memory is from nephew Greg. I remember Floyd took flying lessons. Once I graduated from high school, I went to college in Moorhead, and after that, we went, I went directly into the Army. I was away from home, but I would see Floyd during the holidays. Once he met Irene and got married, he became much closer with us. Floyd was always a great part of the Olson family celebrations. And a few more memories shared from Floyd's nephew, Scott. Every Christmas, before Floyd and Irene were married, we'd invite Floyd over for Christmas Eve dinner and opening presents. He would, would accept only by adding, as long as you don't get me anything. Of course, there was always a present for Floyd under the tree. And he would always say, I told you not to get me anything. Yes, we lied. Even more so, he was always involved in asking us about our presence and wanting to see everything. When Cindy and I moved out to the Washington, D.C. area, we weren't able to visit Minnesota much. But when we did and Floyd was around, he'd ask about the cost of living, especially a good steak in a restaurant. We delighted in telling him how much things cost and maybe exaggerated a little bit for effect, but it was fun to see his crankiness at the cost of living. We were so grateful when Floyd and Irene married. She brought out his soft, faithful side that we always knew was there, but rarely saw. They treated our girls so well. They were surrogate grandparents. It was fun to see them doing their puzzles together. Finally, I was grateful to be with the Olsen clan four years ago in August of 2016. It was really the last time I was able to see him, and I'm guessing that's true for everyone else that came. I will always cherish these memories. And this memory from our for former parish nurse at Hope Church, Nancy. Floyd Olson was a nice, kind man. I remember him driving his wife Irene to Hope for Sunday services and to help in Hope's Vine and Branches Clothing Center. After Irene died, Floyd continued to serve at the Vine and Branches Clothing Center. I visited Floyd at two of his places of residency. He was always glad to see me and exhibited a great smile. He talked about Jana Lee and I could tell he cared about her family very much. They came to Hope's reconnecting with friends for several years. Floyd was quiet, kind, helpful, and faithful. Beautiful memories. I remember the quiet, kind presence and gentle smile of Floyd. I didn't know him long, but Jana Lee would bring him to the special lunch that we held each year at Hope Church for people who couldn't get to the services anymore. I have come to understand that Floyd was a man of faith who loved his wife and loved that love spilled over to his family, friends, and the community of Hope Church. He joined Hope Church officially on April 1st, 1973. The story goes, 
One morning at Hope Church, Irene was sitting with her brother and sister-in-law, Ray and Betty Olson. Betty pointed to Floyd, seated ahead of them, and commented to Irene that that man Floyd was the man Irene was going to marry. Seriously? Well, Irene and Floyd were married on July 2nd, 1976 at Hope Church. Wow, what a story it was meant to be. In the scripture passages chosen today, we are reminded that our hearts need not be troubled, that we can trust in God's provision, and that Jesus himself goes to prepare a place for us as he prepared a place for Floyd, and he told his disciples. In verse 3 of John chapter 5, Jesus says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. But the disciple Thomas did not understand and asked Jesus to explain so that they can know. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Floyd trusted in the God who loved him, who provided for him, who sent his son Jesus to die for him. And that same resurrected Lord is the one who has made a way for him in the life to come. The kindness, helpfulness, faithfulness of Floyd Olson was a gift from God that he graciously shared with those around him. And now he is at peace. As our Romans text reminds us today, true peace with God only comes through Jesus. It is in him that we have access to the Father and share in his glory. And we can face trials and suffering with peace and even joy, knowing that the Spirit gives us strength. We are all facing trials these days in the midst of a global pandemic. It's interrupting our lives in all sorts of ways. As it says in Romans 5, suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Floyd lived with that gentle hope, being grounded in his faith and his love for his family. He persevered when things were hard. Psalm 23 reminds us that we are led by a Lord who loves us, who wants to provide rest for our weary souls, who walks with us in the dark times of life. This same God comforts us and protects us. This same God anoints us and fills us. Floyd walked with the Lord, and the Lord walked with him through the valleys of life and especially this last valley of death. We give thanks today for a faithful life lived, for the hope of the bodily resurrection in Jesus Christ, and that today Floyd is reunited with many of those he loved, is at peace in the arms of his Savior. Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us new and living hope in Jesus Christ. We thank you that by dying, Jesus destroyed the power of death, and by rising from the grave, opened the way to eternal life. Help us to know that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love. We ask your special hand of grace and peace to be on Floyd's family, on Jana Lee and David and all the friends in the days ahead. May they know they are never alone and that your loving arms surround them at every turn. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the one who loves us, 
the one who loves Floyd, who is with you even now. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Floyd, acknowledge we humbly pray, a sheep of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, receive Floyd into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the love and knowledge of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
And the blessing of God Almighty remain with you always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail.